Hey, what's up everybody? How's it going? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. So this past week I just got back from the ACSM conference in Boston, which is the American College of Sports Medicine. And for those of you that don't know what this conference is, it's basically one big conference where a lot of researchers, professors, clinicians from all over the world come together. They share their research regarding physical activity, um, exercise, nutrition, rehabilitation, psychology, whatever it may be, and there's different pre presenters who talk about uh, new future research, and also there's different workshops that address different rehab techniques, exercise techniques, and all sorts of different things. So while I was there, I attended a session on the spine, and the session, what it involved was a judge, or you could kind of say a judge of sports medicine doctors, and they were critiquing different spine related cases and so there are four cases that they kind of critiqued and so what they would do is just there would be a uh, sports medicine doctor or a physical therapist that's presenting their spinal case or spine related injury case that they dealt with and then these judges would kind of critique and maybe suggest different things that they could have done or what they did that was good so there were two cases in this uh, spine lecture that had to deal with disc related injuries and so I wanted to talk about them in today's video because I thought they were very uh, informative and I learned a lot of information that I thought was important. And I think it's important to share with you guys because maybe it could help some of you if you're suffering from some sort of spinal injury or whatever it may be. So the first case I want to talk about was a woman, um, I believe she was in her mid-30s or so, and she had suffered a L4, L5 disc bulge in 2011. And then she was able to heal her injury, but only three years later, she ended up suffering a reoccurring episode. So she had suffered the bulge again, where it was causing pain, but she also suffered a herniation at the L5-S1. So she had L4, L5 disc bulge, L5-S1 disc herniation. This is three years after her initial, initial L4, L5 disc bulge. So... The, the bulge and herniation was putting pressure onto the sciatic nerve, causing severe, severe pain down the leg. And she had a positive straight leg test, so that was one of the indications that there was neural pain occurring. So she ended up going to physical therapy. Um, so this sports medicine kind of doctor treated her, or PT, whatever it was, I forget what she was, but she treated her for six months um, using a spinal traction device known as a TRX 9000. So I, there's a few of my subscribers that I know are familiar with this device and they, that they use this on a consistent basis and they've noticed some improvements with this. I've never tried this before, but it just seems like a good device to use. So after six months, the pain was gone after using this device combined with core stability exercises. So the patient here engaged in 21 sessions of physical therapy. So 21 sessions over the six month period and the patient was pain free, so no more pain from the balls, no more pain from the urination, back to normal activities. So, the panel now that was kind of critiquing this case, which I thought was interesting, with a few things they said. So the first thing they said was, 21 sessions of physical therapy is a lot of sessions, and I have to agree with them. And this is an important point because 21 sessions, a lot of people can't afford this because sometimes you're paying for maybe 60 to $100 per session, so you could be looking upwards of over $2,000 just to be going to physical therapy for that period of time. Now, I want to mention that when I had my L5-S1 L5 disc bulge, I went for physical therapy for six months. I was going about three to two times per week. So I was upwards of maybe about 40 sessions. And I didn't get any, I got very little improvement. I mean, I learned a lot of things just being there and I got relief being there, but went for about 40 sessions and I wasn't healed. In this case, the patient was actually healed, so that's a positive. But these for this panel of sport me sports medicine doctors suggest that 21 sessions is a lot of sessions, especially for someone in this case, because it's a lot of money. And then if you think of my case where I went for about 40, up close to 40, I'd say, but and I didn't really, and I wasn't healed, but this person was basically pain free. I was still in severe pain. I had to basically heal my injury on my own afterwards. So that's the important point that I want to mention. And the important kind of takeaway here is that if you're continuously going for PT, Cairo, whatever type of um, health care or kind of care you're receiving, and you've been going for a long time and you aren't seeing improvements or you're seeing minimal improvements, 
then you either may be wasting your time, you're wasting your money, and it's just not worth it. And it's best to maybe, you might just have to question the individual's uh, expertise or skill set. It might be best just to kind of look elsewhere. So that's the important point there that I want to mention. And the second point was that they talked about spinal traction, these sports medicine doctors, and they didn't really, they weren't really too big on it as of a tool or method of healing disc injuries. Now I'm huge on spinal traction. It was one of the best things that happened in my recovery, but the biggest thing, the reason why they weren't really big on it, and this is what they stated was because there's not a lot of there's very little research out there that has been conducted and published to support the use of spinal traction to heal disc-related injuries. There hasn't been there's very minimal research, and so therefore they don't exactly know if it works. But I can tell you from my experience, it works. Talking to other people, advising other people, and helping other people out, it works a lot. And so that's one thing that kind of stood out to me, and it's something I actually might consider doing as a research project. Um, for my thesis, so that's something that I want to potentially look into, just because there's very little research about it that has been done relating spinal traction and disc-related injuries. Um, anyways, moving on now, I want to mention this last case. So there's this there was this other case that revolved around a disc injury as well, and so this disc injury, it was very you could say uh, kind of odd, and what it was was. There was a 14-year-old lacrosse player that had that was suffering from juvenile disc disorder. So for those of you that don't know what juvenile disc disorder is, it is practically the same thing as degenerative disc disease, but that's just in an older individual. Degenerative disc disease is more so referred to like in an older individual that suffers from that. But this is a 14-year-old 14-year-old person, very young kid, that's suffering from this disorder, juvenile disc disorder. And they were getting pain while they were playing lacrosse, lacrosse primarily. So when they were going from an extension pattern into that flexion, so when you think of lacrosse, you're winding up backwards, and so you're getting into the extension and then moving into flexion, and that was causing them causing the person pain. And so this individual basically underwent um, physical therapy, and the primary thing was just managing the individual's pain. So they did a lot of core stabilization techniques and they found that rest was the biggest thing. So when he discontinued lacrosse or any motions or movements that involved going from that extension to flexion pattern, the individual got better and they didn't really have any pain during normal activities or whatnot. And so the biggest thing, the biggest point here is that degenerative disc disease, juvenile disc disorder, whatever it may be, these types of, this type of disc injury, it's important that you kind of manage the pain. So it's important and it's important to do a lot of core stabilization techniques and different core stability exercises in order to develop a strong foundation for the spine. And that way you can kind of protect the spine and then you can kind of perform different activities maybe for a longer period of time without suffering from the pain. But also rest is very important because as is, it, the, the uh, patient didn't get better until they discontinued lacrosse. And so when they discontinued lacrosse, that's when they got better but the individual did was able to return to lacrosse, but he just had to kind of manage the uh, amount of time he was playing. So he had to m kind of manage the time practicing and playing in order to kind of stay pain free. So it's important that he didn't overdo it or whatnot. Kind of a bit of a rare case because you don't really hear about an individual suffering from juvenile disc disorder. But the thing is, is that one of the important things is that actually a lot of young kids that age do actually suffer from disc disease. It's actually one of the most common um, causes of lower back pain in kind of teenagers or young teenagers or um, individuals around that age is disc pain. It's just, it goes unnoticed all the time because you don't hear about 12 year olds, 13 year olds, 14 year olds getting MRIs. So this juvenile disc disorder just never gets diagnosed. And when you have these kind of kids complaining of lower back pain, they never really know um, and then you, you'll have a doctor just say it may be a strain and they never consider sending them from MRI when actually this is one of the most common causes of lower back pain within that kind of age group is juvenile disc disorder. So guys, kind of the big takeaway though is just it's important in you know, managing 
pain, making sure you're getting adequate rest. If you're someone that does suffer from this de degeneration, disgenerative disease, whatever it is, important to develop a strong foundation for the core. So getting engaging in core stability exercises and all sorts of other different um, core stabilization techniques. And the overall, the big thing is, is that if you're someone that is suffering from disc, uh, disc herniation, disc bulge, and you've had pain for several years or whatnot, the biggest thing here is that this case, the first case that I mentioned was that the individual had a disc bulge and disc herniation, L4, L5, L5, S1, and they were, they were able to become pain-free in a period of six months. Now, I've stated multiple times um, to people in my channel, in the comments section, to other people and people I've just messaged with, that if I were to suffer my injury today again, and I know what I know today in terms of recovery, I would be able to heal my injury in about a six month to approximately a year period, or maybe maybe even less. So the point is, is that these types of injuries don't need to take years to heal. They don't need to take several years. As long as you have a good foundation for a good, you, as long as you have a good foundation, so you have a proper diagnosis and you have a proper treatment plan, you can heal this in a rather um, adequate period of time. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be several years is my point. And you don't always need surgery, uh, which surgery should always be a last option anyways. But that's just kind of the point that I wanted to make. And hopefully this maybe provides some like inspiration and just provides information to other people that they can overcome their disc injuries using spinal traction and just developing good core stabilization and all sorts of other things. So guys, that's just kind of some of the things that I took away from this uh, spinal session at the ACSM conference in Boston. I was able to meet a lot of good clinicians, good researchers around there, and was able to learn a lot of good things. So I just wanted to kind of share some of that information with you. And if you guys have any questions or comments about anything, about this video, about disc injuries, back pain, whatever, just leave them below. And also, if you want to learn more about lower back injuries, disc injuries, or whatnot, rehab techniques, Part of my channel is all about overcoming uh, lower back injuries, specifically focused around disc issues, uh, specifically a disc bulge, because that's just what I suffered from. But if you want to kind of just learn more about that and whatnot, be sure to subscribe to my channel, guys. And for that, we'll leave it at that for today's video. And so I wish you guys all the best and I wish you a successful and productive day. Okay, guys, take care. Activated and then hold this neutral position here for about a, a few seconds or a second or two and lower yourself back to the starting position slowly and controlled. So one key thing to look out for is you want to avoid going into hyperextension. So what I mean by hyperextension is shooting your hips upwards and getting your hips out of that neutral position and more forward. What ends up happening here is we create more of an extension pattern.